Okay, folks, welcome back to the channel. And uh, here's what I've got going on here tonight. I'm going to try to get these, these other three ribs bonded in. And uh, this one, this one, and this one. This one I bonded in in the previous video. It's underneath that piece of plywood right here. But what I've got going on here is uh, I'm going to try to improve on uh, that method that I used the last time to apply the thickened epoxy. And what I did was, first I took one of these uh, tubes of caulk that I had sitting in my caulking gun for like a year. It's uh, just the cheapest old uh, acrylic latex caulk you can buy from Home Depot. It's like three dollars a tube. And I just dumped it out and uh, fortunately it's uh, uh, water cleanup so all I had to do was just uh, dump it out and uh, run it under hot water and, and uh, go in there and scrub that out and get all that residue, all that old caulk out of there. Uh, you don't want to contaminate the epoxy. And then I also went online and ordered some refillable caulk tubes and I like these because you can take off this front end. I'm trying to do this with one hand. You can actually split it apart and uh, that just makes it a whole lot easier to clean these up after you're finished and uh, you certainly want to get all the epoxy out of there before it sets up and hardens in the tube. Uh, the uh, body of the tube wouldn't be a problem but trying to get it out of the nozzle right here, yeah that might be a little bit of a problem right there but anyway I'm going to try to get the camera set up. I, I said I wasn't going to do that but I'm going to try to do a little marathon session here and get all three of these in tonight and I'm hoping that using the uh, caulking gun, putting the epoxy in the caulking gun tubes here will help speed this process up tremendously. So I will get the camera set up here and I will get the resin and the epoxy mixed up and I will be back with you as soon as I get that done and get to the point where I'm ready to start uh, laying down the epoxy. I'll see you here in just, uh, whoa, okay, get a little tangled up here. I will see you here in just a moment or two. Well, okay, scratch that idea. Now, in the past videos, I had talked about the need to get the thickened epoxy mixture out of a small container and onto a mortar board in a hurry. I knew about that. I knew the stuff would get hot real quick. I was hoping, though, that I would have enough work time to get it out of the caulking gun and get it into these corners and make these nice little beads right here. I didn't. It fired off in that caulking gun so fast. I actually ended up having to pull this rib back out, clean all the, uh, uh, the semi-cured epoxy out of all the grooves and all, out of all those little channels. Basically just had to uh, begin again and uh, went back to the old way. Went back to my mortar board and uh, went back to the uh, tongue depressors and just smear that stuff into the corners and once you keep that stuff out in open air it works great you've got plenty of work time and as you can see I now have all of my ribs bonded in I didn't uh, I didn't show you my epic failure on camera because I didn't have time to that is how fast that stuff fired off in that caulking gun tube I didn't even have time to show you how fast it failed uh, so um, now, all I can do now is uh, keep my fingers crossed and uh, wait for the epoxy to cure. That, that, that's, uh, yeah, that's all I can do. All I can do now, like I said, is wait for the epoxy to cure, wait for that stuff to finish uh, hardening, and uh, I'll come out here and check it in the morning. Hopefully, uh, this humidity, this rain that you see over my shoulder here doesn't uh, mess with it. Very high humidity right now. Um, not real sure how humidity affects it and I hope I don't find out the hard way like I did about the uh, epoxy in the caulking gun tube. I'm glad I didn't spend a lot of money on refillable tubes. There might be a special epoxy for that. I'll have to give Total Boat or West Marine or someone a call and see. Uh, it, it might be, like I said, it might be a special type of epoxy that you use with that. Uh, with that caulking gun method I would really like to find out because when I go to put the hull on, when I go to put these skins on I've got to run 
Now imagine this boat flipped over now on, on, its, uh, on its top, but I'm going to have to run epoxy beads the entire length of these stringers and the entire width of these ribs before I go to lay the, uh, uh, the skin on. So I've got to figure out a way to do that and uh, uh, like I said, hopefully there's a way to do that and still use that caulking gun idea, but if there's not, then it's going to just going to be the mortar board and the tongue depressors. Um, it's done and all I can do now is wait okay so that little fiasco with the thickened epoxy that happened on Monday night it's now Friday night and uh, a couple of days ago I took all the clamps off and by the way I got all the ribs bonded in and uh, was able to uh, like I said in that previous segment get all the uh, epoxy cleaned off and just had to start over and got that done all the ribs are now bonded in except for this one in the very aft end I've explained in previous video that I'm gonna put this one in uh, once I flip the boat over um, now getting back to what I was talking about a few days ago as either Wednesday maybe it might have been Tuesday I took all the clamps off uh, I had this frame the structure clamped down to these uh, little sawhorse tables for lack of a better term, that I had built. And uh, of course I had these uh, leveled and uh, actually had them to where the tabletops were parallel to each other. So I'd have a nice level uh, plane there to build the structure on. Well, it worked. Um, I picked up the back end of the uh, boat here. I picked up the front end by the bow, uh, moved it around, twisted it, flexed it, and um, Everything returns to, uh, you know, straight and true. When I put my straight edge on all these points of these uh, ribs on all these corners right here, all the way down, everything's almost perfectly lined up with a straight edge. And as a matter of fact, um, maybe, maybe I can just barely catch a fingernail here in a, on a couple of these, but I mean, you're not going to get it absolutely perfect. Uh, but this is as close to absolutely perfect and true and straight as I could hope to ask for. So, very pleased with the way this has turned out. Uh, one little thing I do need to do, and I do need to, to uh, get this done before I flip the boat over. I need to make uh, some extensions uh, for these ribs to uh, bring them up so that I'll have something here to attach my sidewall to, so, and I planned on doing that anyway. I could have made uh, kind of you know little U-shaped ribs here out of uh, one piece, but I chose to go this route. Uh, right now, it kind of looks like a, a scooter, but it's it's not a scooter. It is going to have uh, uh, sidewalls, but I got to have something to attach the sidewalls to. So beginning here, uh, we're one rib after the bulkhead, and then every other rib, I'm just going to bring up uh, some. Uh, uh, little uh, extensions and I'm going to just pattern them after what you see here on the on the bulkhead and uh, that's what I'm going to attach my sidewall to. Once I get those attached I've got to make six of those and just bond them in place and uh, once that's done then I'll be ready to flip the boat over and start on the outer skin. Still don't know what happened with the uh, epoxy and uh, the caulking gun all I know is, is uh, it worked when I used the uh, Ziploc baggie. You saw that in a previous video when I went to bond this very forward rib in. Um, I don't know what caused it to fire off so fast, but like I said, it fired off so fast I didn't even have time to turn the camera on and record the fail. But um, hey, got it done, and uh, that's all it that counts. So we're moving forward, and I will see you in the next segment. Thank you for watching. Okay, folks, welcome back. Um, you know that little adventure with the caulking gun and the epoxy firing off uh, way, way too fast like it did? Uh, that got me to thinking that, you know, we're all going to make mistakes at times. And that's true whether you're working on a, a hobby project like this or, uh, you know, it's true whether you're just talking about life in general. Mistakes are going to happen. They are inevitable. In his autobiography, Lee Iacocca wrote that everyone 
is going to make mistakes. Now, you just have to hope that they're not overly expensive and uh, you have to avoid repeating the same mistakes over and over. And I believe that's, uh, that's a very good observation and, and it is very true. You don't want to make a mistake that costs a lot of money like you know, forgetting to check the uh, engine oil in your car. And you certainly don't want to repeat that mistake over and over and over again. Now I've done quite a bit of carpentry work down through the years and uh, I've heard it said that the difference between a good carpenter and a so-so you know, carpenter is that a good carpenter knows how to hide his mistakes. And that is also very true. A good finish and trim carpenter can hide a lot of miscuts and, and ragged edges. Uh, so mistakes, you know, they're going to happen. You know, we all make them. And sometimes they're honest mistakes that are made without malice. Uh, sometimes they're not. And there are times we go in eyes wide open knowing full well that what we're about to do, it's wrong. And then there is those times too when we make mistakes out of anger or frustration and I've you know, had my share of those. While a good carpenter knows how to hide his mistakes, there's one thing that you can't do. There is no hiding your mistakes, our mistakes, our sins from God. Now when God gave the law to Moses and that, that, that became known as the Mosaic Law, but when God gave the law to Moses and the law that he gave Moses was holy and pure but at the same time knowing the human heart God knew that no one could keep the law so why was that why did God give the law in the first place why did he give all those statutes and commandments knowing full well that people couldn't keep them well as the Apostle Paul explained in Romans chapter 7 the law what it does and, and what God intended to do was to show us our sinful nature uh, listen to what Paul wrote in verse 7 of Romans chapter 7. He said, If it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had said, You shall not covet. Uh, let me give you this example. How many of you have seen a park bench with a sign on it that says, Wet paint, do not touch. And you stuck your finger in the wet paint to see if it was really wet. Let's have a show of hands. Okay. Fess up, folks. I know you've all done it. Well, the sign's there so you don't sit down in the wet paint and ruin your clothes, of course, but you know, we just have it in our nature to put what that sign is telling us to the test. Now, Paul said he would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. We touch the wet paint when the sign clearly tells us not to. That's just our our sin nature at work in us. That, that's that rebellious nature at work in us. And that, like I said, that's what the law of God was intended to do. It was intended to show us our sin nature. And by doing that, the law points us to what is mankind's greatest need. And that is our need for a savior. We're all gonna make mistakes. Like I said, it's inevitable, gonna happen. You know, we're going to commit sins, and that is true even for truly saved, authentic, genuine Christians. But as John pointed out in his first letter, book of 1 John, if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. And folks, um, that's all I have for you tonight. I do thank you for watching this video. And um, as I always say at the end of every video, behave, be blessed. Time now that I be gone. Uh, you folks, you take care. You have a great week.